All right. So here's another reading for the day. So I was in prayer um, two days ago, I believe it was, and I immediately heard Ephesians 14. Now, I, I just heard Ephesians 14. I didn't hear, um, you know, um, chapter 14, verse 14, I just heard Ephesians 14, and I realized there was no Ephesians 14, um, but there was Ephesians um, verse 14, which I went to and immediately it resonated with me. Um, so I'm going to read the whole chapter and just go from there. I'll put it up on the screen. All right, Ephesians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the Beloved. That's so, so powerful. He's made us accepted in the Beloved. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the richness of his grace, riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed him in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. I love that bit. The predestined, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Okay, it's like the parable of the sower here. You know, the seed fell on good soil, and when you heard, okay, you believed, okay, and in the Bible study that I did on the parable of the sower, if you go watch that, it talks about the different groups, okay, it talks about, you know, the different groups and, and basically how they received the word and some, some, soon as they hit tribulation, it all just went by the wayside, okay, like the, I think that was the lukewarm church, um, they just couldn't endure the tribulation, they couldn't endure the the test of their faith um, because it was just too much. It hadn't, it hadn't gained roots within them. Okay. It had just been on, on a surface level. Um, whereas the Luke group, the, the really strong believers that followed that the word had taken root within them. Okay. And they had those deep roots because when they heard that word and they heard the truth, they knew it was the truth and they retained it and they kept it and they just, it filled them and that 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 fruit and that 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 giant tree just just started to grow and flourish you know um and all from that seed you know from that tiny bit of bit that mustard faith a uh, mustard seed faith um it started to just form that giant tree you know that the birds would you know the birds would perch in and and it provided shade for others so um yeah it's it's there's a lot in that when he says that, you know, um, uh, whom after ye believed, ye were sealed, and then we re received the Holy Spirit. And that's the difference between those that have the Holy Spirit or have received the Holy Spirit and those that haven't. It was, you know, the, the point of, of belief, that depth of faith, faith and, and how they received it. Um, you know, some would just go to church on the Sunday just to tick a box and basically just to say, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm keeping in with God, but their personal experience and relationship hasn't been, well, the depth of their faith hasn't been defined because they're just looking at it at a surface level, going and singing a few songs and reading and listening to a pastor, but they're not taking it in. 
okay it hasn't hit hasn't found that soil so very important which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the so we're talking about the holy spirit which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession and to the praise of his glory we've been purchased at a price okay don't forget that and when we go back here we're predestined okay so before we're put in the womb he knew us and we're predestined okay for this journey we're all going to be woken up at different times god approached us didn't he we didn't approach him he approached us he came to us and he woke us up and so we've been purchased at a high price okay so it's a bit like you know we're, we're a bit like at, at his ransom really um you know there's no um when when he when he has his um when he has you know when when he has a plan for you and you accept it and you start going down that road of sanctification um it's hard to go backwards and you don't want to go backwards because going backwards means backsliding completely and you know going back to square one um but when you go down that road the further you go down um it's it's really just you know it's a journey it's like a it's like a storybook you know it's like this giant journey that just you keep going down and down and down so um you know we've been purchased you got to remember that okay we're we're a new we're a new creature after we're we're born again that's what Jesus said, you know, if in, in the gospel, if you look at the gospel of John, um, you know, that's what he says, you know, he, he's talking to, um, he's talking to uh, the Pharisee, uh, his name escapes me, um, the one that basically said, you know, I know you must be the son of God because of all the miracles that you've been performing. Um, but he, um, you know, he's saying to him, you have to be born again. And he's like, how can you be born again? How can you come out of, how can you go back in the womb and you be born again twice? And he's like, you know, um, you're a great teacher in Israel, but you don't know this. <laughs> um, he doesn't understand what being born again is, you know? So um, that's going to bother me now. I've got to look that up. Just give me a second. <laughs> Nicodemus, there we go. Sorry, I just, it bothers me if I can't. Um, yeah, and he says here, you know, um, very, ver verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, how can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's, mother's womb and be born? Um, and then Jesus reiterates and says, you must be born of water and of the spirit. He cannot en enter the kingdom of God. All right, we'll keep reading. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, uh, sorry, that strings together, ceased not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us ward who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all the things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. I just felt in my spirit the need to mention something here. Um, all right, so when I first came into the faith, I started seeing things in the sky not too long after. Um, I've mentioned this after the moment with the, the starry hand. Um, 
And one of the things that I've only re- realized recently is just how many of the things that I was shown are starting to come into fruition now. And so at the time, you know, I was quite doubtful, like I was not doubtful, but I was like, oh, you know, is this message from really from God? Um, you know, because like, you know, I can see stuff in the sky, I can see all these things. And, you know, I started to have some doubts and I started to feel like, you know, oh, maybe I'm being deceived or whatever. And then, you know, I'm just coming to realize now after obviously understanding the Bible far better, having some um, some time away from looking at the sky and that many of the things he's shown me and many things that I, I started talking about just in my old videos, um, they're all starting to come to fruition and it's really crazy and it's just wonderful too because it also confirms to me all the wonderful things and loving things that I was shown are also true and there were so many things I was shown that just had my jaw drop and you know I didn't I didn't ask for any of those things they're all a gift and I want to reiterate that everybody gets different gifts and so sometimes we think you know like some people like they speak in tongues they get the gift of tongues some people get the 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 gift of you know being able to interpret dreams some people get the gift of being a a prophet or a prophetess where they're actually given you know direct word to to speak out um some people have the have the gift of teaching or the gift of you know being able to deliver sermons and other things so they're all different gifts in the bible um but you know when we are given gifts you know it's not our decision what we're given um but it's also not to look at someone else's gift and and think oh i wish i had that and not to envy and not to not to you know because it's easy to do that in a in a season where you know maybe god's being really silent with us um he's being quiet and we feel like he's not responding and sometimes he'll go through other people that are close to us and he'll he'll be talking to them and they'll be feeding us what you know that he'll they'll be telling us what what he said or they'll be giving us the word and and sometimes you know and sometimes that can happen if we're you know if we're not quite listening well enough or sometimes it can happen because that's the way he chooses to do it so what we have to do is be at peace with the gifts that he gives us and and just understand that you know sometimes those gifts are only for a season for a period of time um you know they might only be to be used for a period of time and then he'll want something else for us you know his will might change or might shift for us in the sense of um you know we, he might want us to focus on a different area so the season i'm in at the moment is a season of um studying um a season of rest and and peace um and just learning patience and learning to um i guess um just listen and, and understand the sound of his voice better. So, because what tends to happen is, you know, we have, have up, and da- up and down days. I'll just flick to my camera. We have up and down days and we, on an up day, you know, everything's just great and we're on fire and we're, we've got all these ideas and we've got all these things coming to us in the spirit. And, and then on a down day, we, we tend to, you know, be fending off attacks and and so the last thing we feel like doing some sometimes on those down days is working or or delivering something that he's asked us to do and and so but that might be his will you know that might be what he wanted you to do and so you have to like grit your teeth and just kind of go oh i feel tired i can barely move um i gotta do this today and so yeah we we're gonna get that and that's just part of this um but I guess my point is, is that, you know, we have to be very um, fluid and ability not to, not to be locked into, I only do this, this is my routine, I only do, you know, we just have to be fluid and ready for anything. Um, Because when all this kicks off and whether it kicks off as a big spectacle, which is most likely, um, or whether it kicks off in small increments of multiple things all consecutively tied together in a few days 
um, we're going to have to be ready for anything. So you have to be kind of ready to um, completely throw away all the things you depend on day to day, your routines and your, you know, how you, how you live, you know. Um, have you practiced living without electricity? Have you practiced filtering water? Have you, um, you know, are there people around you that live near you that you can help when they run out of food? There's all these things that are probably going to be required of us, um, you know, before, um, before, you know, before whatever happens and before we go. And, um, and, and when we do go, we come back anyway as workers. So, um, yeah, I think, I think what I'm trying to say is that, you know, we've got to get out of a box of just, here's my day, um, and just try, and I'm talking to myself here too, and trying to be more fluid and, and just going with things sometimes. And, you know, if, if something suddenly changes, we've got to have that energy and that ability to be able to pivot and get up and just turn out turn ourselves around and and just go and do what he wants um and and what his will is um because his will is you got to remember it's it's for our own own good okay it's it's for our good um it's to benefit us it's to help us because we can't see the whole movie playing out we can only see the scene that we're in we can't see the whole movie and if we could see the whole movie we could be like, oh, right, okay, because I did that, then it triggers this event and this event and this event, and then it leads to here, which is where I want to be. Um, so we just have to trust. We have to trust, you know, we have to have faith and trust that, you know, even if he asks us to do something that might seem a bit outside of what we're comfortable with or outside of what we're used to doing, um, we just have to pivot and do it um, because it's all part of our our movie or part of our scene or part of our, our story. Um, it's what he's, his will is for us. And we want to stay on that path that he, he has for us, right? We want to stay on that path um, that he's etched out for us. That's the path we want to be on because it's the path that leads us to who we're supposed to be. So, you know, that's, that's just in, in me at the moment to mention that. And um, I took a roundabout way of getting there, but um yeah, so this is a very powerful word, guys. I um, really, really love this and um, hope it's um, strengthened and edified you today. And I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll continue on with the videos. All right, God bless.